let's do. Uh, I didn't think this bit through. Oh. Hey guys, it's Sandra, and I am winded from bringing all those books. I gotta work out. Hey guys, it's Sandra and Claudia from the Alexandrite system here together. I think this is really our first blended video. Besides like the medical trauma one, that is an outlier and should not be counted. So as you can tell by what I just dragged in, we're going to be talking about our plural book collection today. We take a lot of pride in having an extensive collection of books about DID and plurality in general. And we just wanted to take some time to show off, to be honest. And, you know, recommend some books to y'all. We're, we're, we're book people. <laughs> so, we are going to be going in alphabetical order by author's last name, except for one section which is organized by subject. So, we're going to be starting out with Amongst Ourselves. Amongst Ourselves is a DID self-help book from 1998. It is written by Dr. Tracy Alderman and Karen Marshall, LCSW. We found this book pretty damn helpful when we first discovered our plurality four years ago now. Oh my god. I believe this was a recommendation from Emengard in one of their Plural Positivity World Conference talks. The book is currently out of print, but you can pick it up for basically what cover price was in 98. I think we got this for like 20 or 25 bucks back then. Some of the stuff in here is a little outdated, and some of the terms used aren't how people typically use the terms now. I think splitting is one in particular. I think that they use it for like rapid switching, whereas we would typically think of it now as like the separation of one system member from the rest of the system, like a, a new system member. Yeah, so Tracy Alderman is a system. They are also a clinical psychologist, which is really cool. Always love seeing that. The book covers a lot of different topics from managing your DID to coming out about your DID, finding a therapist, as well as the ways that your plurality can enrich your life in general. There's also three sections in the back here for people who aren't systems but know and are close to systems. There is one section for uh, partners of systems, like married or dating partners, a section for therapists, and then one for family members. One thing I'll say about the family members one is it kind of assumes that the family members are somehow associated with some abuse in the system's past, which is not the case for every system. So maybe be mindful of that one, read that over first before you give it to anyone. So yeah, good resource, a little outdated, it is 25 years old this year, worth looking at at least. Next up we have Switching Time by Richard Baer. I will admit that most of these I have not read, at least fully, and some of these are singlet-centric, let's say. The cover says, A doctor's harrowing story of treating a woman with 17 personalities. Oh my god, 17. Can you believe- oh, oh, imagine having 17. As powerful as Sybil, Switching Time is the first complete account of such therapy to be told from the perspective of the treating physician, a stunningly devoted healer who worked selflessly for decades so that Karen could one day live as a single human being. <laughs> You know that, I, I think it's a tweet that's like, did, it, did a cat write this? <laughs> that's how I feel about this. It's like, Rich, did you write this? Did you write that deeply complimentary back? Yeah, so I haven't read this one. It seems kind of interesting, at least from like a, um, a historical perspective, I guess. Takes place in the 90s, it looks like. Oh, it's got some art in it. That's cool. I, I do love seeing system art. You know, interesting stuff. Not for everyone. Next we have uh, one of my favorites, one of the most interesting ones in here. One Cells, Multiple Personalities from 1811 to 1981 by Lewis Baldwin. So this book covers case studies from, as it says, 1811 to 1981, starting with Mary Reynolds. Each one of these in the table of contents has a one-line pithy description. Mary Reynolds, 1811, the manic can escape from the depressive. Oh, mood. It does end with Billy Milligan, um, 
noted Tom Holland character, I suppose, now. Because they were the most recent public system, for better or for worse. I mean, you know, not everyone in here is going to be a good person. Not every system is going to be a good person. There is a lot of really interesting stuff in here. It just kind of proves that, like, we've been here for a long time. You know, I'm of the opinion that people have been plural since the dawn of time, basically. You know, we have different different terms and understandings for it, but I think this is just part of what being a human is. Some other highlights of cases are Victor Laval in 1904. Four of his six personalities suffered from paralysis, but of different parts of his body. Doris Fisher, 1915. It's not easy for a quiet, diffident type to live in the same body with an incorrigible mischief maker. That one sounds kind of fun, to be honest. Of course, it covers Sybil Dorset. 1973. Harriet, 1933. Movies were an important part of her life, including home movies of her various personalities. I will say a couple of the cases in here are a lot about uh, traumatic brain injuries and sort of personality changes because of that. Not all of them, of course. I would not even say most of them. I think it's like maybe three out of like 20 something. But I think there is still something very cool to be said about this. Next up, this one has no cover. Beyond Integration by Doris Bryant and Judy Kessler. This is actually written by a patient and their therapist. It's a sort of case study largely talking about uh, Judy's experience post-integration. Kind of the stages of getting there and then the stages after. We're not integration people, but we love hearing perspectives like this. I think this is really fascinating. Next, The Flock by Joan Frances Casey with Lynn Wilson. I love how many of these are library books and have, like, the old cards in here. This is a memoir of a system who eventually integrated, talking about their experiences being plural from infancy till 30. We love a memoir. I love hearing people's experiences and stuff. I did also just see one quote on the back of the book here, which makes me cringe. A ground zero look at one of the most frightening outcomes of child abuse, multiple personality disorder. Oof. It's gonna be an oof from me. Oh no, these books are stuck together. Jesus. Next, When Rabbit Howls by The Troops for Trudy Chase. The troops are legendary in the plural community, to be honest, when the first systems to openly speak out against integrating or forced integration. This book is harrowing, I, I gotta say, but it is such an important book in our community history. Of course, the back sensationalizes it a bit. But unlike anything you've ever read, this unique book has over 90 authors for all of Trudy Chase's troops speak out to tell her story. Next, Silencing the Voices, One Woman's Triumph Over Multiple Personality Disorder by Jean Derby Klein. Another memoir. We love a memoir. Something that I notice on the back of these books a lot is the phrase like, these are the personalities of blank. Like this one says, these are the voices that live within the mind of Jean Darby Klein. I haven't read this one. Not much to say on it. It seems neat. A uh, small system, three people, uh, two adults, one kid. Doing this video is actually making me want to take time and read all of these. Next, a personal favorite, Telling Without Talking. Art as a Window into the World of Multiple Personality Disorder by Barry M. Cohen and Carol Thayer Cox. This book does have some disturbing stuff in it, but this is the book that made us want to go back and finish school for therapy. Specifically art therapy. I'm not sure we're going to do art therapy anymore, but it's really a fascinating book. It shows a lot of like broad groups of types of art that systems make. And then at the end, there's a singular case study of like one particular system and all of their art. Also, there's a there's a picture of Garfield in here somewhere. I know it. I've seen Garfield. Uh, it's under switching pictures. It is theorized to be one system member drawing Garfield and then another switching in and trying to draw the same thing. Good attempt. I just find that cute. It's so 80s. <laughs> we love Garfield in this house. But really recommend this one. This one is so interesting, especially if you're into like the clinical side of discussing plurality. Next. Multiple Personality Disorder from the Inside Out, edited by Barry Cohen once again. 
Esther Giller, and Lynn W. Lynn W., I believe, was the editor and creator of Many Voices magazine, which was a magazine for plural people that would take submissions from systems for articles and stuff generally around, like, one theme, a lot of art as well. That is available for free online. I need to remember to put a link in the description, but hopefully you should find it there. If I didn't put it there, please remind me. Because there's, like... 20 years, basically, of Many Voices archives available for free at the request of Lynn W. after their death. But Multiple Personality Disorder from the Inside Out is a very similar thing to Many Voices, where it is a lot of writing and art and poetry by systems about themselves and about their experiences. This is just a book of plural culture from the time. Recommend it. Next is Freshwater, a novel by Akweke Amezi. I really hope I pronounced their first name correctly. Akweke Amezi is a spiritual system. This book is not a discussion on their plurality per se. It is a fiction story that is strongly based on their own experiences. It's a tough book, but a very cool book. They also have a memoir that is, like, directly about their experiences. I don't own it yet, but one of these days. Alright, stack two. Shit, which one's next? Oh, okay. These books are all different sizes and shapes and weights, and, you know, vary from paperback to hardcover, so it can be kind of difficult to carry these all at once. I don't know why I did this to myself. Next, A Fractured Mind by Robert Oxnum. So Oxnum is a culture scholar on China. I don't exactly know what that means, but this is his memoir <laughs> about DID. Once again, we got the back cover with, like, a spiritual and psychological thriller that you simply won't be able to put down. This compelling and deeply moving story provides fresh insight into the vulnerability, complexity, and resilience of the psyche and the meaning of the quest for wholeness. Yikes. <laughs> Haven't read it one of these days. Next, Set This House in Order, A Romance of Souls by Matt Ruff. So this one is not a memoir, it is a fiction story written by a singlet. Haven't read it, not the biggest fan of how he wrote about himself in the back. Matt Ruff is not a multiple personality. It drives me nuts when singlets say a multiple personality, or like a D.I.D. I don't hear it very often, but... I hear it occasionally, and it's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> it's the same thing as, like, oh, a transgender. So yeah, haven't read this one, by a singlet, fiction. Could be good, could not be good. It's about two systems who help each other out and become friends, something like that. The jacket doesn't really make it super clear. It says, Andrew's new co-worker Penny Driver is also a multiple personality. God damn. A fact that Penny is only partially aware of. When several of Penny's other souls ask Andy for help, Andy reluctantly agrees, setting in motion a chain of events that threatens to destroy the stability of the house. I like that he used souls, though. I think that's good terminology. Or terminology I vibe with, at least. Next, if you are long-time viewers of our channel, I am talking from, like, our first video, essentially, you will remember In and Out of Ice Glass by Sarah Smith. This book is fantastic. I fucking love this book. It is about an OSDD system, or rather like a DDNOS system at the time. I think she calls her diagnosis DIDNOS, so Dissociative Identity Disorder Not Otherwise Specified, which, you know, is actually kind of a better one than DDNOS. Dissociative Disorder Not Otherwise Specified. Because, you know, there's a wide category of dissociative disorders. Anyway, this is a memoir and a journal, basically. It's about Ray, one of the people in Sarah Smith's system, discovering and coming to terms with the fact that they're plural. And let me tell you, as a little baby system, this really spoke to us. There was stuff in here that nobody ever talked about with us. Oh, hey! <laughs> I found my eyeglass prescription from like four years ago. <laughs> Prescription expires <laughs> October 3rd, 2020. Whoops. 
We got new ones recently. <laughs> uh, DID, man. I was looking for that, like, four years ago. <laughs> anyway, I will warn you outright that this book is haunting, to be honest. There is some stuff that they write about their trauma that has really stuck with me to this day. I read this, like, four years ago. It is an incredibly raw book. It is a book with a lot of pain in it. But it's also a book with a lot of hope, because I guess spoilers. Are there spoilers for people's lives? <laughs> Sarah Smith et al. are okay. They're okay. God, now I want to read this again. It also talks a lot about them dealing with their alcoholism and how their plurality ties in and interferes with that in a lot of regards. Very cool. Very good book. Huge trigger warnings on this one. It's rough, but worth it. All right, next we have the Sybil Quadrilogy that we have been talking about doing a video on forever. We gotta get around to that. This is our first video in like seven months, you know. We're working on the Beatles video, okay? Sybil will come after. First up, we have Sybil by Flora Rada Schreiber. Here's a spoiler for a future Sybil video. We fucking love Sybil. And this next book, Sybil Exposed, is bullshit. Debbie Nathan's quote-unquote evidence is flimsy at best. And I'll tell you, a lot of this counter-evidence is from men. There is a huge element of sexism in the idea of disproving Sybil and disproving Schreiber. And it must be said that this revelation was only brought forward once Schreiber, Wilbur, Sybil's therapist, and Mason, Sybil herself, Shirley Ann Mason is the real name of Sybil, were all dead. So, you know, they weren't around to defend themselves. Two people who allegedly deeply analyzed some recordings between Wilbur and Mason in their sessions both said that they consider Mason to be, quote, a simple hysteric. Yeah, no element of sexism involved in debunking Sybil, huh? There's one guy who's interviewed in here who said that he had recordings of Mason saying that she didn't actually have DID, multiple personalities, wherever we're calling it, nomenclature at the time. But when asked for these tapes, he was like, oh, I don't have them anymore, sorry. But we're apparently just taking him at his word. Real good journalism. Then we have two much more interesting books. Sybil, in her own words by Patrick Sarasi, PhD, and After Sybil, From the Letters of Shirley Mason, by Nancy L. Preston. Both of these people actually knew Shirley Mason. They were friends with her. In fact, After Sybil is a collection of letters from Shirley Mason herself. Like, these are first-hand accounts, and in her own words has a lot of Mason's art, and just a lot of her own stories and things, it's what is needed. I will admit, Sybil, the book itself, is a little bit sensationalized. I won't lie to you. But so is Sybil Exposed. So what we do really need are accounts like this, of the real woman who people have spent her death slandering. Sorry to get heated about Sybil for like 15 minutes, but drives me insane. Highly recommend about half those books. Next up, Unbecoming Travolta, a memoir of mania and multiple personalities by Ricky Lee Travolta. No, not related to John Travolta. One of their system members is an interject of John Travolta's nephew, Ricky Travolta. I haven't read this one, but it's certainly an odd duck of a book. You don't get a lot of books about interjects. Next, First Person Plural by Dr. Cameron West. This is a memoir. Dr. Cameron West is plural himself. We love to see it. Man, I heard a lot more books about AMAB systems than I thought I did. I haven't fully read this one, but I have heard it is very good. I also like that Dr. Cameron West calls uh, his system my guys. <laughs> he also takes the time to introduce all of them at the beginning of the book. Honestly, their system seems really charming, <laughs> but... It is a memoir about DID, so it's got a lot of abuse stuff in it, as per usual. Next, Ups and Downs of My Life, An Emotional Journey by Linda May Westbrook, and... This is a recent one, this is uh, 2020. It is a book of poetry, some raw stuff in here, but some really good poems spanning like 
tw 20 years? 30 years? 95 to 2016, so that's 20 years. 20 years. Good book. Next, a book that I never thought that I would be holding in my actual hands. Anne's Multiple World of Personality, Regular No Cream No Sugar, by Anne M. Garvey. This book is available for like two or three dollars in ebook form. Before I bought this, there were two copies of the physical book that were floating around eBay. One of them was selling for between forty and fifty dollars usually, and the other was selling for between a hundred and twenty dollars and a hundred and fifty dollars. There was a day I saw it go down to thirty-five dollars and I snatched it up. It's a memoir. You, you don't gotta get the physical book. I just don't trust digital sources anymore to exist in perpetuity. I think Ann Garvey actually follows us on Twitter, weirdly enough. So, if you're a fan of the channel, hi Ann. So it's a collection of, like, blog posts and general, like, journaling. The most expensive book in our collection. So worth it to have a physical copy of this. Also, this book is huge. I did not expect this book to be, like... 400 pages long, to be completely honest with you. Oh, final stack. All right. Okay, so I did the last stack second, so now you're getting the middle stack. I know it doesn't matter, but... Whatever. Next up, the largest book in our collection, The Third Person by Emma Grove. This is a graphic novel about a plural trans woman. This is also a recent one, uh, 2022. I actually interviewed Emma for our channel late last year, uh, and then I got really mentally ill shortly after, and I never ended up editing it or posting it, as you can see. I'm very sorry to Emma. I'm really hoping to get around to it one of these days, but it's just tough. Content creation is tough, man. Anyway. So this book is largely about her relationship with one particular therapist. She was trying to get, like, therapy letters to go on HRT, and this therapist realized that she was plural, and basically denied her on those grounds, but also repeatedly accused her of faking being plural for attention. I was asked by Emma to specifically not badmouth this therapist, because she feels that there was wrong done on both sides. And I will keep that promise, but I will strongly disagree with her that if this is accurate, what she says that the dialogue and events are exactly how she remembers it. Did Emma say some stuff that was kind of rude? Yeah. It doesn't mean that she deserved some of the shit that he said to her. And that's as much as I'm going to say. The book is a pretty quick read overall. I mean, it's, it's, it's a graphic novel, you know? I really like the ways in which she artistically depicts her other system members and, like, their communication. It's really cool and refreshing to see a book by and about a plural trans woman. Emma is a nice person. I gotta do that interview, man. I recommend it. Just... Trigger warning for this therapist. Next, Dissociative Identity Disorder, A Gift by You Are Ideal. <laughs> cute name. This book is like 20 pages long. Just a, a cute little book about like tips for dealing with the bad parts of DID, but also how to embrace the good parts of DID. It's cute. Next, The Crissing Link, Poetic License, A Poetic Journey Through the Labyrinth of Multiplicity by Reverend Chris Itterman. So Chris Itterman, better known as the Chris's, uh, actually gave us in and out of ice glass when we met them in person like four years ago. Thanks. They've been a figure in the plural community for 30 years, something like that. This is a book of prose and poetry. Always love to have a book of poetry here. Next up, a book by a singlet, Love Me Whole by Nikki James. That's W-H-O-L-E. I love this book. It is a fiction book written by a singlet, but a singlet who has done her damn homework. This is about a singlet who falls in love with the system. It's cute. It's sexy. 
It's got a really deep emotional core. Our main singlet boy, Vaughn, really learns to love the entire system. Love loving Orin whole. We have an entire podcast episode about this book, so if you want to hear us talk about this book for like three hours with friend of the show, Nicole, I'll put a link for that too. Also, I am 90% sure that Orin's system is based on one particular known system, who I will not give free advertising to. About the research for the book, Nikki James wrote to us in an email saying, My goal when I decided to write this book was to show a more compassionate and honest side of DID since it has been so poorly represented in movies and other books I've read in the past. For me, research is one part reading as many medical references and texts as possible, but two parts listening to people who live with the disorder and ensuring I didn't miss the true heart of what it means to live with DID. So for as many research books and seminars I watched on the topic, I spent far more time on YouTube on channels like yours. Thanks. <laughs> Watching people's lives and learning from those who live with DID every day. Although I listened to many stories and watched a ton of documentaries, I found one channel where they were particularly transparent about the nuances of their life, and also did all kinds of Q&As to help give the world a better meaning of who they were and what it meant to live with DID and multiple alters. So yeah, sounds like it's based on one particular system. If you've read this book and you know that system, it's kind of, if you know, you know. Fantastic book, though. I, I, I can't say enough about it. The audiobook is also really good, read by uh, Adam Gold, who does a great job. Next, Today I'm Alice by Alice Jameson. This is another memoir. We love a memoir. I haven't read this one, but I, I just love hearing everyone's perspectives on their own plurality, you know? Though I will say the subtitle of Nine Personalities, One Tortured Mind makes me roll my eyes a little bit. Sorry. Next, a book that's not technically about DID, but kind of is, but isn't, and it's written by a singlet, and I don't know. This is another Emmengard recommendation from that same presentation, I believe. George by E.L. Konigsberg. So George is another person who lives inside the head of Ben, uh, the main boy in this book. At one point, he's actually misdiagnosed with schizophrenia. I believe it actually says, like, later on that this is a misdiagnosis. It's a book for kids, or like, you know, like, tweens. It says 8 to 12. An interesting one. I like a plural book that's not exactly about being plural, but is. I think that's neat. I just think it's neat. Next. Clinical Perspectives on Multiple Personality Disorder by Richard Cluft and Catherine Fine. Enemy of the show, Richard Cluft, is a hack. I'll say it. The way he writes about his patients is callous at best. He says that he has forced integrations. I believe he says as of like 1993 when this was published, he had integrated over 160 systems, some of whom were was against their will. This is like a bunch of old psych text. It's not really relevant today. It should never have been relevant. This is where the term narcissistic investment comes from, which is basically used to describe a system who doesn't want to integrate. Terrible. But, you know, why wouldn't I have it on the shelf? Bad books are important too. And oh boy, is this one bad. Next, Treating Dissociative Identity Disorder, The Power of the Collective Heart by Sarah Krakauer. So I believe this one is for clinicians about a particular therapy technique that emphasizes, like, empowerment and connection between selves. Seems like she has a lot of empathy for systems. Can't speak to the quality of this. Uh, haven't read it, but I like the term collective heart. I think that's cool. Next, The Homeless Year by friends of the show L.B. Lee. L.B. Lee are actually real-life friends of ours. Uh, this is a graphic novel about the year that they spent homeless. Some really raw stuff in here. A lot of discussion about romance between system members and general, like, system unity. L.B. Lee is an outspoken plural activist, a wonderful plural artist, a very kind group of people. One Selves, one of the early books I talked about here, was actually a recommendation from them from a Plural Positivity World Conference presentation from, like, 
two or three years ago. I will try to link that as well. Good book. I gotta get the rest of their stuff. Next up, Dissociation Made Simple by friend of the show, Jamie Merrick. Very cool to be able to say that. <laughs> this is probably the most recent book I own. I think this came out this year. Yep, 2023. I think Dissociation Made Simple is the new amongst ourselves. I'm giving it some high praise by saying that. It is both for clinicians and for systems themselves. It's got a lot of day-to-day -day advice on dealing with plurality, help with healing from trauma, finding a therapist. Jamie Merrick themselves are plural. It's a great book. If you need something to help you out with your DID, get Dissociation Made Simple. Also, she sent me this as a review copy, so I guess this is, this is a review now. I guess it's been a review. Reviewing like 35 books here. Next, we have two books that I'm going to talk about in rapid succession here. We have Mending Ourselves and Poems to Our Therapists, both by Many Voices Press and the readers of Many Voices, and edited by Lynn W. Important books for plural history. These are more poems and prose and drawings and things. It's, it's important. This one, Poems to Our Therapists, was hard to find. Not gonna lie to you. This was one where there were two listings on Amazon. One listing was for $8. The other listing was for $83. This one is so worth it, though. Several of the poems in here made me cry. Also, slightly embarrassing story. I know you don't have to keep books pristine, but I felt incredibly silly when, in an effort to take a picture of one particular, like, two-page poem, I, like, gently pressed here to try and keep the pages apart, and snap, the binding broke on the first couple of pages here. It's not like it's fallen apart or anything, but I was just like, I've had this book for five minutes. Literally, literally five minutes, and I broke it. <laughs> uh, good book. Good book as well. Next, Dear Little Ones by a friend of the show, Jade Miller. We did an interview with Jade, like, three years ago now, I think, three and a half. Very nice person. This book isn't just for systems, it's for, like, people with inner children and stuff as well, who, like, consider themselves to be singlets. There are people out there. I'm not, I'm not here to say that they're plural. It's written in child-friendly language, uh, it has, like, a picture on every page and stuff. Not that page. It's sweet. I gotta get the other two sometime. Actually, the modern release of three has a testimonial from us, I think? So look out for that. And finally, All of Me, How I Learned to Live with the Many Personalities Sharing My Body by Kim Noble. It's a memoir. We love collecting memoirs, to be honest. It's lived experience. I will admit, I haven't read this one. I think this is also an Emmengard recommendation. And I think this is one where this system actually at one point had three apartments that the people who, like primarily occupied one of them didn't know about the other two and they were like we could have been saving so much money <laughs> if we didn't accidentally live in three places <laughs> so yeah that's our collection i love that we own this this video is essentially a celebration for the fact that we filled completely one shelf of our bookshelf out there it's a pretty wide bookshelf too if you are a system and you have written, like, a memoir or something about your plurality and you want to donate it to us, that would be amazing. We have a P.O. box in the description or you can DM us on, like, Twitter. You can also help expand the bookshelf by donating to our Patreon down in the description. We've also been posting updates about the Beatles video every once in a while. There is actually the entire Yellow Submarine section up there, which I highly recommend. Oak worked fucking hard on it. You can follow us on Twitter for as long as Twitter continues to exist. We are Alexandra. We're basically that on every platform. We have a Tumblr, too. I think we have a co-host as well. Haha. -ha. Do people use co-host? I made one, but don't use it. I'm sure we'll have a freaking blue sky eventually. I'm not moving to another social network, man. I'm tired. <laughs> But yeah, this, this was a fun video to make, even though it's really long. We've got a couple more videos coming out soon. One is actually going to be about us going back to school, because we went back to school recently. We're finally going to finish that psych degree. Please clap.
Also, we recorded this with our webcam. Let me know how this looks. I feel like this was slightly easier than normal. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching, guys. We will see you next time.